Today we're talking about dynamic stretching and the Cadillac. Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm Jennifer Gianni, and today we're going to be talking about the Cadillac and dynamic fast stretching. Today we're using the Cadillac to look at the third fascial fitness principle, dynamic fast pulsating stretches. So this is a big setup, as you can see, but the payoff is big. Because when you create that crescent moon shape of the body, that flexion of the spine, you're able to lengthen inflection instead of just collapsing. And so you create lots and lots of room in the front of your spine. And this is really important in your ability and your client's ability to really affect and open this big condensation of comprehensive connective tissue on the lower back and on the sacrum. So let's look at it. So you can see that I have the safety strap on, tower bar, and I'm springing the tower bar from underneath. So when I push up on the bar here, I get this immediate connection into my mid back. And this is gonna help me to really open my thoracic spine and it keeps the back of my heart and between my shoulder blades opened as I go into flexion. Um, I also want something that I can reach at least one foot into when I go into my oblique curls here. And so this isn't perfect, but I've come up with just the sticky and the yoga block. So let's look at this. So I'm gonna have my right foot on the Cadillac, my left foot on the yoga block, my left hand on the tower bar and my right arm over it. And then the image I'm going to use for myself is a sail on a sailboat. So I'm imagining that the wind is hitting me below the belly button <laughs> and it's billowing the back of my sail. So I'm creating this very long flexed spine and from here, from the opposition of my hand into my deep belly, I'm pulsing. So it's one, two, three, and then my spine springs back into extension. And again, and recoiling from my sitting bones through the crown of my head. And recoiling. And again, it's all these floors that I have that I get to reach into that's really creating that length. It's my foot, right, that really helps me to send my lower belly back and my arms and how the spring is really talking not only to my spine, but to the, I feel I also have a spring in my arms here as I'm pulsing back. So I'm pulling the coils of my arms apart. You could also do this in the center. However, I really prefer the, the diagonal um, pulse flexion using the Cadillac. Um, the centered one, I just have my feet onto the, the floor here, so I don't have as much that I can really push away from, although you could try to dig the heels in, right? So I have the spring, I have the bar, I have my mid-back, and then I go into that long flexion, and from these opposing forces, I'm going to find this length tension through my spine. <sighs> Opening the back of my heart and then from my sitting bones through the crown of my head, just finding that easy recoil back to neutral. And widening in the back of my body as much as possible, and then from my sitting bones through the crown of my head up. And then of course, you wanna change the position of your arms and do it all over again. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you play with that with your own body and with your clients, and let us know how you did. Today we have a question from Margarita. She says, this week I'm working on lumbopelvic stability and limb strength in her apprentice program. On session 10 of trapeze and Cadillac refresher course, you suggest to add rotation of the pelvis in bridge pose 
without moving the legs. Are you talking about finding three and nine o'clock while the pelvis is up? Yes, that's exactly what we're talking about. So once you're in a bridge pose, it's a very difficult exercise to keep the legs still, to keep the back of the head and the tops of the shoulders still, and only find that little rotation of the pelvis around the femur heads. So a really good way to build the skill with your clients, I know this is gonna surprise you, but it's to use the overball. So let's look at a few things here. So in supine, you can use the overball right behind the sacrum top of the pelvis so you feel like you have a little pillow for your sacrum. Feet are on the floor, parallel legs and feet, eyes to the ceiling, you have the back of the head, tops of the shoulders here. And then you want to observe on your client that they're finding this pure, small little rotation of the pelvic halves around the femur heads. So there, there will be a slight like little piston of the knees, but you shouldn't see the legs falling out. You shouldn't see a big reach of the knees back and forth. And of course, when looking at the pelvis, you're not gonna see a big hiking of the hips here. We wanna really keep the ASISs in line with each other and really use the curvature of the pelvis around the curvature of the ball. So we want it to be like the, the pelvic half is waving up and over the ball. And in translation, the other opposite pelvic half, half is lifting up. So once you build that skill with the client, you might have to stay with this exercise for at least a few sessions. Then you can start to build the skill in an actual bridge pose. So what I suggest, if it is okay on the client's back, is to use a block. And to set the block at its low position and its, its long position. So it will be under the sacrum lower back in this position to start. So you'll lift the client up, you'll slide this under them, and then you let them rest for a moment. So they have the block at their sacrum, they get this moment of rest where they can kind of situate the feet, the legs, the pelvis, the head and the tops of the shoulders. Then from here, they don't have very much more to go. They're just gonna lighten off the block just a little bit. And once they do, then we'll add that small rotation. And the block acts as a little bit of a cure for each side of the sacrum when they go into that little rotation. So from here, floating the pelvis up, ASISs stay straight across from one another. So I'm gonna rotate my right pelvic half down. My left pelvic half goes up. And I'm barely, just lightly touching the block with this right half of my sacrum. And then I'll come back up to the centered position and changing sides, right? Oh, and my left one, a little bit harder. And back up. Good, and down. So along with the, the teacher cueing the legs and the knees to stay in place, um, the client can also have this virtual cure of the block under them. If this is too high, right, you could use that overball also. So they start on the overball, they lift up just a little bit, Right? So this is a much lower lift, so it's going to be a little bit easier on people's glutes and hamstrings. But here you can do the same thing. Although the ball, it's not as distinct of a cure on the sacrum as the block is, but it still does the trick. All right, so I hope you enjoy that and that you can play with it a little bit with your own body and your clients and let us know what you come up with. Casey also answered this in a previous episode. So take a look at that and see how we both come at it from a different perspective. That's it for today. If you have a comment or question that you'd like to see answered in an upcoming episode, comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or the forum on our site. See you next time and never stop learning.